My next guest says the Treasury has the capacity to provide a backstop for uninsured deposits if it becomes necessary, but warns the political hurdles to get to that guarantee will be high. Let's bring in Alec Phillips. He's chief political economist at Goldman Sachs. Alec, great to see you again. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Let me just start with, do we know for sure that SVB depositors are 100% protected in this acquisition now, or, or what happens to funds above the cap? Do you know? So uh, I haven't heard anything new specific to the SVB situation, but I think, you know, the FDIC has made it very clear uh, that they intend to protect uninsured depositors in not just that resolution, but potentially any resolutions going forward, at least in the near term, for essentially any banks. So I think right now, uh, the odds of uninsured depositors losing funds are you know, really pretty low. The other interesting aspect of this takeover is that the FDIC will participate in some upside here uh, from the bank, uh, I guess from its turnaround, we could call it, which I, was it AIG back during the financial crisis? I mean, I kind of hark back to that period when I think the government benefited quite substantially from AIG's eventual recovery. And given that $20 billion that the FDIC is on the hook for, you wonder if their upside should have actually been more than the kind of half a billion dollars it sounds like. Well, I mean, I think the, you know, the history of these things is that traditionally um, over time, the government does actually uh, come out better than expected. I think in this case, it, you know, it's a little bit different only because uh, the FDIC deposit insurance fund is likely to take, um, you know, a hit at least in the near term from this. And then we'll see what happens. Um, but that's, you know, but that's what the, uh, the insurance fund is there for. What happens to the insurance fund itself? And I, I take your point from your first comment that it was the implicit backstop of all deposits that has kind of stopped the banking deposit flight we've witnessed. But who's going to ultimately pay for that backstop? And do you expect Congress to make it explicit? Well, so that's, you know, that's the challenge. Uh, so on the first question, I mean, the answer is the banks. Um, hmm. To the extent that uh, the insurance fund is drawn down through any you know, further resolutions, the banks will have to cover that probably through a special assessment. Uh, but that's, you know, that's all bank money. That's not taxpayer money. There is, you know, sort of a bigger question of if this doesn't work, if depositors ultimately don't have, you know, full confidence in their deposits because some of them are uninsured, you know, then at that point, the Treasury might consider stepping in. I, you know, right now, it seems pretty unlikely that that would happen. But it's possible at some point, depending on you know how things unfold, that they might come back to that. That gets tricky because that actually does then involve uh, taxpayer funds.